Hello beautiful souls and welcome to today's reading. We are doing a soul purpose reading today and I'm really excited because we haven't done a soul purpose reading for a little while and the message I've received with this particular soul purpose reading is that it will be very focused around anyone who wants to step into their soul purpose work as a as some kind of career, as some kind of profession. So sometimes when we do a soul purpose reading, it doesn't have to be related to that. It can just be that you are here to, you know, activate more of your gifts or step more into alignment in a certain area of your life or something like that. But today is felt very, very strongly guided to really focus on bringing your soul path, your soul purpose, your soul mission, your thing that you are here to live and breathe and be the expression of in this lifetime to life. And for anybody who is resisting this, struggling with this, who is focused on perfectionism, anything like that, if you have a soul purpose that you are wanting to bring to life and you are struggling in any way, this is the reading for that. So it's a very, very clear, specific message. So if that doesn't feel like it resonates for you, then by all means, this may not be the reading for you. But definitely focus on anyone who knows that they are here to live their soul's highest expression and it is related to some form of work, some form of purpose you're here to share with the world and you're resisting in some way. Even if you've started it and you're resisting change, you're struggling to understand the next step, whatever it might be, but very, very focused on this one specific sort of thread of soul purpose. Let's get some opening messages here. Whoa, this card just leaped out at me. We have Paradisical, You Belong to Paradise. So I'm gonna get three cards and then we'll go into those and then we'll get some more messages. Paradisical. We have Euphoria, Honor Yourself. Ooh. Beautiful message coming through with that. And we have Naz. Feel loved and proud. Okay. Really, really beautiful messages. Now, as with all readings, take what resonates, leave whatever doesn't, because I know there's going to be a couple challenging messages coming through. There is a couple shadowy energies coming through here that I'm picking up on as well. But some messages are for you, some messages won't be for you. So we're going to go into all the different energies that are coming through. First, we have this Paradisical, and for me, I love this card so much, and it's one of those cards that I always connect to Dante's Inferno, Purgatory, and Paradise, so the Divine Comedy. And it says, you belong to Paradise, but what I'm feeling with this is bringing it back into the energy of where do you feel like you are in your journey? Inferno, Purgatory, or Paradise? Where do you feel like you are stuck? Where do you feel like you are resisting? Where do you feel like you are in that particular journey? Do you feel like you're currently living the expression of paradise, your own paradise? What your version of you stepping into your soul work looks like, feels like, would be the highest expression of? Do you feel like you're kind of stuck in purgatory? And I know many of us have been feeling this place of purgatory. It's like, I'm out of the inferno, but I'm not quite in the paradise. And I have no idea what's, what's in this in-between stage. Do you feel like you're in purgatory? You're in the void, in the liminal, in that breath between you know, in that pause state, do you feel like you're just waiting for that next step to be shown to you? Or do you feel like you're still in the inferno energy, which is still debriding, going through the shifts, going through the changes that you need to in order to get to the desired result that you have? Like, where do you feel like you are in the journey? Where do you feel like you are in this particular experience, in this particular thing? That feel quite straight to me. So just first and foremost, asking yourself, like, where am I in my journey? Am I Inferno, Purgatory, Paradiso? And that may not resonate for a lot of people, but that's definitely how I'm channeling with that card. And it's one of my favorite cards to sort of feel into because we all want to connect to the paradise. We all want to connect to what paradise looks like for us. And we can stay stuck in that purgatory energy because we're resistant, we're fearful, we're, we're not allowing ourselves to step into what our true gifts are or our true purposes or our true sort of life force energy is showing us. So first asking that question, where am I in my journey? Then we have this euphoria, honor yourself. And what I'm hearing is honor within you what is sacred. Honor within you what is sacred. I want to repeat it like 10 times, honor within you what is sacred. I won't repeat it 10 times, but that's what I'm feeling. It's almost what I'm hearing for some, and again, only take it if it connects, but what I'm hearing for some is it's like you've got so caught up in what everybody else is doing, and you've got so caught up in the stories and the 
and the you know the the sort of the bullshit around you and I'm just seeing these like stories just looping around and you know if you're scrolling on social media and you're seeing people do things and you're like I can never do that or they're so much more advanced than me or you know or I need to do it that way because everybody's saying that this is the way you do this thing over here or you know all of that stuff pull out of all of that come back in and connect honor what is sacred within you what is your sacred gift? What is your sacred message? What is your sacred offering? Forget about what everybody else is doing. Forget about what everybody else thinks you should be doing. Forget about how anybody else is showing you how to do shit. The way I've always taught business, well, not at the very beginning. I used to teach business a very specific way because I was very much in the masculine like energy of teaching business. And, you know, I used to do many business mentoring many, many years ago when I was very much still very stuck in that mindset myself. Whereas now the way I teach business and how to step into soul purpose and how to do this work is to follow the pulse that is in you. There is no one way to market. There is no one way to create. There is no one way to do this specific type of offering. Just because 10 other people are doing that, that thing that one way does not mean it's right for you. You've got to do what is right for you. And I always say this, like a prime example of that is the way I do readings, right? If I followed the script, if I followed what is the algorithm likes and what other people like and, you know, the way that YouTube would favor it, blah, 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 I would read a very, very different way. I would do my readings a very different way. If I cared about the metric, if I cared about how people saw me, perceived it, whatever it might be, but I honor what is true within me. And what is true within me means that I trigger people, I piss people off, I channel a certain way, I don't just pull the cards and it's like, oh cool, yeah, here's this card here and I'll remember what this card means and that's great. Like I channel the energy, I channel the messages and I, I do my own style, my own way and I can't do it any other way. As much as I have tried in the past, I tried to be a little bit more gentle, a little bit less, you know, intense and maybe a little bit more subtle and try to do the pick a card readings because everybody likes them, but I don't like doing them. I just don't. I don't find them beneficial to me. I don't find them actually very beneficial to the collective. So as much as I tried to do things a little bit differently, I, I played around with the way I wanted to do readings. I had to honor what was true within me and what is true within me is the way I read. This is how I do it. And this is how I do it for clients. And if you ever get a reading with me, this is exactly how it is. It's very to the point. We channel lots of messages. There's lots of different energy coming through. And I had to be okay with that. I had to be okay with doing it a different way and not needing it to look a certain way for everybody else's enjoyment or experience right the way we do our work is we can only honor what is alive within us we create it for ourselves. we do it because it is our truth we cannot control how people receive it and that's the biggest thing i try to explain to people when we do business mentoring and stuff like that is we can step into this like we can put our work out into the world and some people will either like it love it or they'll hate it and we can't control people's receptivity of it we can only control our output we cannot control how it's being received and then we can control how we respond to how it's being received. But we can't control someone's response, their, their own experience of it. We can't control that. And so honor what is sacred within you. Honor your special magic, your special medicine. Even if there is no one else out there that looks like they're doing things the same way, honor that path, follow that path, because there is something that is so beautiful in that unfolding, right? There is something so magical in that. And what I see so many people doing in the spiritual path, in the soul purpose path, in the whatever kind of language you want to use, obviously most of you will know I don't really like focusing on the labels and you know the, the phrase of the spiritual community for me feels very icky right now and all that kind of stuff. But let's just say there are you, you want to do something, you feel it alive within you and then you look at how other people are doing it to see, well they're doing it like this and they're really successful so I should do it the same way right and that just feels icky it feels gross it feels wrong within right um so like i can see this in so many different ways in so many different energies i'm you know we have a beautiful deck here and most people will know what this deck is if you are if you're if you're into cards if you're into readings and stuff like that you will either know this deck or you'll know the author it's rebecca campbell right and the artist danielle Oh my God, I've forgotten how to pronounce her last name. 
Oh my god. <laughs> Daniel Noel. Daniel Noel, right? And when this was released, it was like the first of its kind in this kind of style. It was very, it was very, maybe not the first of its kind, but it was very, very fresh and new, this style. This style has now been copied a lot. But does it have the same potency? Possibly not. Does it have the same energy? Possibly not. Like it depends on the person who's creating it and all of those kind of things. But that style has definitely been copied. You know, we look at a lot of different decks and people pump them out. I literally read a post from a deck creator the other day saying, like, look how many we're pumping out. We're pumping out all of these Oracle decks. And I received one of those Oracle decks and I was like, and it feels like they're being pumped out. It feels like they're trying to keep up with the demand of like creating something that's slightly new, slightly different, but the energy now feels stifled and it feels rep repetitive and it feels like there's no, there's nothing fresh. It's like, I'm just following this like formula and this formula, I've just got to keep working with this formula. Right. And so when you feel into that, it starts feeling dry and stagnant. So like, I don't know why I'm using that as an example, but I am. And so when you feel into that, like honor your own sacredness, honor what is true for you, honor what your magic and your medicine is, because what you have to offer is so unique and it can't be replicated. You can't replicate something that is your own personal magic and medicine. And if you're trying to find the right pathway for you, maybe you just need to look within. Stop looking to the external to validate how you're being guided to actually step into your path in some way. That feels like a very, very um, big message for some people and a message some people aren't going to like as well. And that's okay. And then we have this now. It's feel loved and proud. Now, this may be a harder message to receive for some. And it's something that I personally have experienced recently and it's something that I'm very very strongly connected to right now and it's something that I'm seeing a lot of people work through and journey through and it is very 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 wound based right and so when we feel into the humiliation wound so for those of you who don't know much about the core wounds our five core wounds are rejection abandonment humiliation betrayal and injustice if you want to know all about it I teach about it in our shadow work journey I'll link it below that course will always be available um, but when we really go into this humiliation wound, one of the biggest wounds is actually pride, feeling proud, wanting someone to feel proud of us. And it's like, I will keep doing this thing over and over and over again until someone feels proud of me. I want to seek validation from the external world that someone is finally proud of me. And the opposite of pride is shame. So when we have a feel into like pride in a beautiful way, not pride as in like, oh, prideful, but like pride is in a beautiful way. I feel really proud about what I've achieved and what I've done and what I've created and who I've become. Can you feel proud in that? Or do you feel shame? If you're still holding on to shame around certain things, there is a deeper wound to have a look at there. And so when we really, really feel into this, ask yourself, are you seeking validation in the external world for someone to feel proud of you? For someone to feel proud of how far you've come on your journey and who you've become and what you've created and, and what you've achieved. Or can you turn that within and say, I am proud of who I have become. Like I can see that for myself. I can feel that for myself. I can honor what is loved within me and not worry about the external. One of the things we speak about a lot is, are you seeking internal or external validation? And if you're still seeking it, validation in the external world, it is always going to be filled and fueled and have some kind of tie to a wound. And so can you turn that validation within and internally validate? I am proud of how far I've come. I am proud of doing this. I'm proud of stepping into that. I'm proud of like this first step that I've created. I'm proud of doing the work that I've like the inner work that I've done to let go of these shadows or whatever it is. But can you start to close out any shame you might have of not doing it quick enough, not doing it as good as this other person, you know, this person here is doing it better than me, anything like that. If you're holding on to any of those woundings, work on that, clear that out so you can step into your soul purpose. Massive energy is coming through with those three cards, like huge, huge, huge energies coming through. So take them as they resonate, leave whatever doesn't. But this feels like it is a very deep dive energy into soul purpose work. And for those of you who are new to my channel, new to my work, and new to the way, like what I do, my mission is to 
awaken people to their soul purpose. Like that is my main mission is to get you to connect into what your true soul purpose is in this lifetime and live it. Live your soul's highest expression in this lifetime. So if we have to dig a little bit deeper, if we have to throw a little bit more wound out into the world to connect into that, then that's what we do. If we need to create a bit more friction, that's what we'll do. Because we need people to be stepping into their soul purpose work now more than ever. We need it now more than ever. Let's have a look. We're going to get four of these. What do we need to see in pairing with this? We have three of inspiration. Oh, I'm loving that message coming through. Okay. Just right off the top, the message there is if you take the first step, the dominoes will fall. Obviously, we've got the dominoes there, but if you just take that first step, the dominoes will fall. We have the six of emotions. We have two more. We have the nine of materials. And and then we have the devil. Okay. So With this three of, three of Wands energy coming in here, it does feel like when you take that first step, the universe will like move you forward. If you can take that first step, the dominoes will start to fall. Like You will start to see the path being laid out before you. Every single time you take that leap of faith into what you know is true for you, you will start to see how the path begins to fully unfold in front of you. You don't have to know every step. You just have to know that first one. I always talk about like just know the next best step. The next best step, and we work a lot with this energy, with the high priestess in so many different ways, but all you have to do is ask what is the next best step, not the next 20, not the next 50. I just need one. I just need this moment to unfold for me. And then we have the six of emotions, and this is obviously like, this can be like past, someone from your past coming in, this can be inner child, but what I'm feeling with this is like, remember what you used to dream of as a child? Like, remember what that felt like to dream without limitation, without being told that that's not possible? Like, can you believe in those dreams again? Can you reconnect to those dreams again of what it would be like to have that kind of feeling of dreaming as if you were a child living in fantasy land and know that those dreams can actually manifest if you put the work in? Like, what would that feel like? to like reconnect into that playful, innocent, childlike kind of quality of I can dream it into being, I can dream it into existence. And maybe there's a past dream, something that you've had, that you've always wanted to do and it's coming up again now and it feels like this is like rising from the past. It's a dream that does not want to be forgotten, it wants to be remembered. How can you have some like openness and some playfulness with that energy? Really beautiful. I'm just seeing like go back into that innocence of dreaming with like unlimited wonder and joy and unlimited creation and creativity. Such a beautiful energy, that one. Um, the Nine of Materials, what I'm just hearing is when you honor what is sacred within you, everything you've ever desired starts to unfold. When you honor what is sacred, money starts coming in you will start receiving the gifts that you've been seeking. Like all of the things start to align to move you towards that 10 of pentacles, right? That that fully desired, lived experience of what it is that you are here to be the expression of. But you need to take that first step. You need to honor what is sacred within you and take that first step. Otherwise, how can you expect this to unfold? How can you expect all of this beauty, right? That rose, it's like tightly budded and then it starts to bloom. How can you expect the blooming if you're not willing to take those first steps? If you're not willing to honor and nurture and nourish. We did a meditation for that in the dark moon ceremony the other day. It was a, a rose meditation. It was really beautiful, but it was allowing ourselves to kind of connect into the bud, the blooming, the decay of the rose, the thorns for protection, but also nourishing the soil. The soil needs to be nourished as well. And I'm just seeing this as like if you have like soil that has no nutrition, no nourishment, no food available, how can that, that bud begin to bloom? And that's what I'm really feeling with this is like you need to nourish it, you need to nurture it, you need to become very sacred with it. So nurturing what is sacred within you, honoring that, really allowing yourself to work on 
what is true for you if you're new to what you're wanting to operate in. So let's just say you're wanting to become some kind of energy healer and you're new to it. Work on your craft. Work on becoming a master at it. Like that's how the, that's how all this energy starts to unfold. And the devil here, what I'm hearing with this is one, there's this puppeteering. I, I love this particular devil card because it is a puppeteering kind of energy. It's like who outside of you is trying to tell you what to do? Or is it external thoughts, external um, wounding, external stories, or old wounds from the past that are puppeteering? It's like the mind could be puppeteering you. Someone in your life could be puppeteering you. But I am seeing that puppeteering energy that if you allow someone else to like control how you're showing up in your world, right? You, you're not in control. Like You need to cut those cords. You need to cut all of the energetic attachments that anybody has over your truth, your magic, your power, your potency, whatever that looks like for you. And then you can start to blossom. Like I'm seeing this beautiful phoenix coming up and it's like we've got the butterfly, but it's this phoenix energy and this, this bigger, brighter, more expensive version of you. But in order to do that, you need to cut off anything, cut out anything, cut those strings, those cords of anything that is trying to like suck the life out of you. That is trying to take you off your path. Okay. Two final messages. What do we need to see? We have deep replenishment. Retreat, rest, be held. So if you feel like you have no nurturing energy within you take some time to fill your well right fill your own well drink from your own cup don't let anybody else take any energy away from you right now sometimes we need seasons of, of isolation of um of kind of this solitude energy so that we can fill up our cup we can really tune into what our true dreams are and not listening to the external noise in any way and that's what I'm really feeling It's for some, it's like you need to just withdraw just a little bit, withdraw just for a moment or two. Like it might be a day, it might be a week, but just like bring your energy back to self, fill up your cup, nourish what you need to nourish so that you can fully step into what your truth is, what your soul purpose is, what your soul path is without the, this, this attachment energy here that I'm seeing. It's like, if you feel like someone is attaching to your energy, like I've had a lot of that recently. Um, a lot. I've had a lot of these very, very strange energies coming towards me recently. Um, I always work with a collective energy, obviously, but lately I feel like I've been uh, very, very strongly attacked energetically. And again, not everything will resonate with everybody. So if, if you don't buy into this, then that's okay. That's that's your personal journey. And I know my protection. I know my boundaries and all of those things. But I just felt like I was having this like an like it was an onslaught of attack, an onslaught of energy, and I kind of feel like it's been purposely done. It was a very very strange energy for me. So what did I do? I disconnected. I took some time. I took a break. I had a few days to just really get clear with myself to clear out any of that negative sort of energy that was trying to come forward. Um, put up you know sort of stronger energetic boundaries. I really had to sit with that mentally and feel into, okay, what are my boundaries around all of these things? Because also I had other things coming at me um, in lots of different ways. It's been a very, very interesting energy for the past couple of weeks. And so when you're feeling into this, it is time for replenishment. It is time for solitude. It's time to withdraw, step back, just take a beat, take a breath and making sure that the decisions you're making are coming from you and not coming from anywhere from the external world as well. One more card, one final card here. And we have Pillar of Light. Your vibration is rising. You are the Oracle. Beautiful final message there. But you are that Pillar of Light. Be that Pillar of Light. If you don't feel like you're a Pillar of Light right now, if you don't feel like your energy is really strong and clear and your own and high in any way, I don't really like the high vibe thing, but you know. It's, we're looking at this vibration is rising. If you don't feel like you're in that right now, then take some more time. Get back into this deep replenishment space. So that when you do start to step into your purpose work, you have more energy to give. You have more to offer. And you don't have the same capacity of people trying to um, pull you into their own stuff, their own stories, their own drama, their own bullshit energy. Like you know who you are. You are honoring what is sacred within yourself and you have a pride within yourself. 
and you know that no one can fuck with that energy that's how that feels to me is that and I always say this is like when you start stepping into your sovereignty you become unfuckwithable and that's what when you start working on your purpose work that's the energy you need to become that's the energy you need to be and what I noticed the other week was that I had people fucking with my energy and I was like dude that's not okay this is not okay but I had allowed that there was a couple things that had taken place and I had allowed that to happen so my responsibility in that right because I can't control other people's behavior but my responsibility in that is to disconnect take a beat take some time and get back into the sovereignty energy where people can't mess with my energy where people can't send me this sort of like negative kind of shitty energy towards me or weird attachment energy weird energy that feels like they're kind of clinging on to me for dear life energetically because I've had a lot of that there's been multiple different things taking place in the past couple weeks which has caused me to reflect a lot I've had to really sit with that because I create that portal and whenever that happens it's always my reminder to be like oh hang on a second I've been putting too much energy out into the external world and I haven't been giving myself enough I need to top up and so really feeling into that, where is that playing out in your life, right? Where is that playing out in your life? But I'm also just feeling with this, this pillar of light, making sure you're grounding. The height, like the deeper you ground, the higher you can ascend. That's just energetically, that's our one of our energetic sort of patterns or beliefs or thoughts or feelings, whatever you want to connect to. But we need to be grounding that light in. The more grounded you are, the more easy it is or the more easeful it is to let go of all of this like negative energy that might be coming towards you. One of the big things people fear as well, stepping into soul purpose, If what if people judge me? What if people are negative? What if people don't like what I'm doing? They will. There will be judgment, right? And that's where we have to come into our sovereignty and say people can judge all they want. All I can control is my offering. I cannot control someone's reception of that. I can't control how someone experiences that, but I can control my response to that, right? So we have to really look at that as well. So really interesting reading today for Soul Purpose, but I really hope for those who needed to hear it, it's giving you that insight to move you forward. Like don't allow this energy to keep you stuck and, and stagnant and still in your life. Like move towards your purpose every single day, even if it's just a millimeter. One millimeter of growth every single day will get you closer to your dreams versus waiting for perfection, waiting for paradise to be handed to you on a silver platter, waiting for all of the conditions to be right because they never will be. So can you take a step today? What do you need to do? Do you need to nourish yourself? Do you need to take a step forward? Do you need to like work on your, your humiliation, wound, shame, pride, whatever that might be? Do you need to cut some cords, disconnect a little bit? Like what is the thing you need to do to move you forward? I really hope this resonates with those who need to hear it. If you want to book a reading, healing, or anything like that, everything is always listed down in the description box below. Sending you so much love, beautiful souls, and I'll connect with you all again very soon.